Hey Premier 6 Math Projects, this is Coach Saiful with your daily dose of math mastery and today we're going to go into question, no, your assessment paper number 7, uh, question number 1. Uh, today we're going to be going into percentages which is actually pretty pretty simple uh, once we know the basics, okay? There's nothing else that we can actually test us on. So once you get the basics right, you should be able to do this perfectly well, alright? So let's take a look at the questions right now. Uh, the questions are, for number 1, is this, okay, let's take a look. It says, find the product of 20% of 20 and 40% of 40. So all you have to do for part A is find 20% of 20. And what's that? 20% of 20 is equal to 20% is 20 over 100. Okay. Of means times and 20 means 20. <laughs> okay. So cancel the zero. You have and cancel this zero and you're gone and you have two times 2, which gives you 4. 20% of 20 is 4. And 40% of 40, similarly, is just um, 40 over 100 times 40. Okay? And what you will see is you cancel this and this, you cancel this and this, and you have 4 times 4, which gives you 16. So the question is actually asking you, what's the product of 4 and 16? So 4 times 16 is going to give you the answer of 64. Alright, so that's it. If you got that one right, high five. Because you are a math prodigy. Good job. So basically, that is all the questions asking for. Very simple, right? Very, very easy. You will see as you go along that these questions are actually pretty simple, okay? Um, and let's take a look at the next question. The next question is this. Mary weighs 28 kilograms. She is 20% underweight. What should her ideal weight be? Okay, for this kind of question, uh, you need to understand first, what does underweight mean? So, you most probably have heard overweight. Yeah, you know, you've probably made fun of some kids like that, or maybe, you know, <laughs> I don't know. So, overweight means you are over the weight. And over what weight? Okay, over what weight? Over what weight means, eh, sorry, uh, over which weight, okay? And the which weight is, this weight means your ideal weight. Okay, your ideal weight, in other words, is also called your perfect weight weight which means it's also called your optimum weight or whatever it is okay so basically it means that you are supposed to be this heavy okay so for example if you've ever done uh, your NAFA test which is your fitness test your physical fitness test okay uh, you will see that you, there's actually a little uh, what's that called a little uh, graph not graph lah, a little chart okay which will give you uh, your height over here and your weight over here, okay? So, for example, uh, it would put something along the lines of this, okay? It will say, uh, for someone who is of height 1.60 or 1.61, 1.62, you look for your weight or uh, your height. So, for example, let's say you are 1.63, okay? You look for your height and then they will put that 80% weight, 90%, 100%, 110%, so on and so forth, Okay? Maybe they have up to um, 150, okay? 1 to 50. Okay, so anybody who is above 120 will be considered overweight. Actually, anything above 120 is considered overweight, okay? And they will send you for a fitness, uh, what are they call? Uh, they'll send you for a tough club last time, you know? The trim and fit club where the, cafe, the pet kids will become thin, okay? That's how it goes. Uh, so, for example, let's say you are 80%, okay? Your 80% of weight is... Uh, for 1.63, maybe uh, 45 kilograms, okay? Which means that you are still underweight. 90% is maybe 48. 100% is maybe 51. 110% is maybe 54. 53, sorry. Then maybe 120 is 56. And 150 is maybe 170, uh, okay? Example. So this is actually uh, an example of your weight. Okay, so in this case, your ideal weight is the 100%. Okay, excuse me. In other words, you are supposed to be 51 kilograms, but anything below it means you are underweight. Anything above it means you are overweight. So, in this case, what did they say? They said that she is 28 kilograms and she is how many percent underweight? She is 20% underweight. 20% underweight. So, now you know one thing very important. 100% is the optimum or or the ideal weight okay ideal weight is 100 percent. so if she is 20 percent underweight means what is this this is actually 80 percent why because 100 minus 20 gives you 80 percent this is 80 percent of her ideal so 
how do you find the ideal? So we just simply write something like this. 28 kilograms is actually 80%. So how do I find 1%? Okay, simply take uh, 28 divided by 80 kilograms. Okay, now how, how do I find 100%? So I just take 28 divided by 80 times 100. Okay, so this is where you will get the answer of 35 kilograms. Okay, let's take a look at how to do this. Simple. 28 divided by 80. Excuse me, having a flu. <laughs> okay, times 100. So you will get 35. Alright, so that's it. Okay, so that's how you do question part B. Okay, if you got that one right, high five. Because you are a math pro. Good job. And let's take a look at part 3. Okay, so let's look at part 3 now. Uh, part C, sorry. There are 75 blue balloons and 84 yellow balloons at the birthday party. How many percent more yellow than blue are there at a the party? Now, and for this case, the phrasing is very important. How they ask you the question is very important. They said, how many percent more yellow than blue? Okay. So let's take a look. More yellow than blue. More yellow, I can spell apparently. <laughs> More yellow than blue. Okay, let's take a look at this. Very important. How many more pers uh, more yellow than blue? Than blue tells you that your denominator, that means the thing at the bottom here, must be the number of blue uh, balloons. How many more, that means the difference, should be above. So to find the answer, just take difference over the blue balloons times 100%. Okay? In this case, 84 and 75 gives you 9. How many blue balloons are there? There are 74, right? 75, sorry, 75. So therefore, you get actually um, 9 over 75 times 100%. Okay? So very important is for these kind of questions, you must make sure that you have the correct base. So in this case, you get 12%. Okay? 12%. So the correct base is 75. Let's say I tell you, if how many uh, more yellow than total? Then you will change the bottom to total. But if I say how many more, how many less, uh, how many less uh, blue than yellow? Then your bottom must be yellow. So always take a look at the numbers below. I mean, look at the, the way they ask you the question. Okay? So if you got that one right, high five. Because you are a math prodigy. Good job. And let's do the next question. The next question is for part D. Uh, Mr. Ben bought 4 kilograms of flour. He used 30% of it to make 8 cakes. What percentage of the flour did he use for 1 cake? So now, this actually is a trick question. To, you can actually do it in a few steps only. Okay, So you can take 30%, he used it for how many cakes? For 8. So 1 cake equals to... What? 1 cake, flour. One cake equals to 30 divided by 8, which gives me... 3.75%. That's it. That's actually how you do this uh, uh, very easily. Okay, But if you want to go the long way, you can do that as well. So you take 30% of 4 kilograms. Okay? So, uh, or make it easier for you, 4,000 grams. So you take 30%, which is 0 0.3. Why? Because 30 divided by 100, which you can see is 0 0.3. Times uh, 4,000 grams, which will give you 1,200. 1,200 grams. Now, there are 8 cakes, right? So, 1,200 grams divided by 8 will give you the answer of 150 grams. Now, 150 grams is each cake. The question is asking you for percentage. So, you must take 150 grams and percentage of what? Percentage of flour. Total flour is 4,000. So, 150 divided by 4,000 grams times how many percent? 100 percent. So, 150 divided by 4,000 times 100, which will give you the same answer of 3.75%. Okay, so if you did it by the first way, I'm going to give you a big high five because you are a math prodigy. Good job, okay? So, and that is it for part D. Very simple. And for part E, the final one, uh, the, this is actually pretty, pretty cool. The length and the breadth of a rectangle is 40 cm and 30 cm. If the length of the rectangle is increased by 20%, at 20%, what will be the new area of the rectangle? Okay, so you can do this uh, two ways. Again, we have an easier way and a difficult way or a long-winded way. The easier way is to just take 40 times 30, which gives you the current um, area, which is 1200 cm squared. 
okay, or 1,000 to 200 same subscribers, okay? Um, and the other thing is, <coughs> you must make sure that you understand one thing. <laughs> Excuse me. If you increase the length by 20%, okay? If you just increase one side by 20%, okay, what you will see is the area will also increase by 20%. Okay, this is the rule. Okay, so for example, 1200 uh, cm cube, it will increase by 20%. So this is 100%. So how do I find out uh, the new area? I just find 120%. So 120% is simply 1200 divided by 100. Why? Because this is 100%. And I times 120, which will give me the answer of cancel, cancel. 12 times 12, 144. And I have a zero on top here. Answer is 144cm squared. This is the easy way. Okay, so um, uh, just a note. Uh, it's okay for you to do this only when one side of the rectangle is made longer. If both sides are made longer, let's say I also say 20% is also increased. Okay, um, you will find out that the answer does not increase by 40%. It will increase by 44%. Okay, I won't tell you why, but uh, you can actually try to figure this out by yourself. You are very smart. Okay, so just try to figure this out by yourself. But basically, you cannot increase the area by uh, adding these two up. Okay, you can only do it when there is one side is actually uh, longer by a few percent. Okay, so the longer way, if you want to do the longer way, is simple. So the length is 40, right? Uh, if they increase by 120, you understand that it's 40 is 100%. So to find 120%, again, I just have to do 40 divided by 100, okay, which is 100%, divided times 120, which will give me the answer of 48. 48 times 30 is also going to give me the answer of uh, 1440. Okay, bam, okay. So this is the other way you can do it. All right, if you got that one right, high five because you are a math prodigy. Good job. So basically, that is it for question one. Uh, question one, right? That's it. Very, very simple. Okay. So um, I want you to share with you a lesson for the week, which is this. Trust yourself. Trust yourself, my friend. Why? Because you know more than you think you do. This is very true for a lot of people, okay? I realize that most of you actually already know the answers, but you are not really confident of it, okay? So my only, I can, my, I can only advise you by saying you have to trust yourself. You've already done the work. You already have tried all the kind of questions that has come out through your homework, through your assessment papers, etc., etc. To be honest, you've probably spent uh, maybe close to, uh, maybe even I think close to 500 to 600 hours just doing math, okay? Um, if you calculate from your primary 1 all the way to primary 6. So you know a lot of things, you know? They have this uh, saying where uh, a research actually shows that if you hit 10,000 hours, okay, for... Uh, if you keep doing something for 10,000 hours, okay, you will actually become a, a big expert on the subject. Now, you probably have spent maybe 10,000 hours, uh, not yet, maybe not yet, but maybe you spent close to 1,000 hours or 500 hours, half of that, which means that you should be probably very, be very, very good. Okay, so all I have to say to you is trust yourself. You know more than you think you do. That is quote, side from signing off saying you are a math prodigy. Good job.